Well, hello there, random person on the internet who's probably wondering, which card waited 13 years for its combo piece to get printed? Well, this whole video is gonna be about that, so we better jump right into it. If you've seen any of my gameplay videos, you know I love combos. And while sometimes Wizards just throws two super synergistic cards in the same set, maybe even without realizing it, the real cool combos are the ones that utilize cards that were never designed with each other in mind to form an infinite or game-ending combo. The combo pieces in today's video were printed 13 years apart, yet work together like they were meant for each other. They go together like peanut butter and jelly, pizza and everything but pineapple, YouTube videos and ad reads. Wait, what? This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom and if you're looking for any of these combo pieces or anything else magic related, Card Kingdom is your place to be. Check them out, a link is in the description down below. Okay, back to the combo. Well, I could just show you the cards and explain it, but uh, that would be a bit boring, so… Alright, on the play with a pretty decent hand, so that's a keep. Wait, what is this? Hidisugu's second right. 4 mana instant, if target player has exactly 10 life, this deals 10 damage to them. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty weird card from back in 2005. Uh, is this part of the combo? Probably. Let's just play a swamp, play Shambling Gast, pass the turn. Opponent has an Overwatch as a companion, so all the cards in their deck have to have odd mana cost, shocks in a stomping ground, and sends a Lovestruck Beast on an adventure so they create a 1 1 human token. Oh, why, yo, that's a Toga Famine Incarnate. So, 8 mana, 7 6. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs 2 less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. So if we sacrifice 3 creatures while casting it, it only costs 2 mana and when it enters the battlefield, up to 1 target player's life total becomes half of their starting life total rounded down. So in a 20 life format like Historic, uh, that's 10 life. Let's just uh, put this card here for later. Play a land, play Kalein Reclusive Painter, enters the battlefield, we create a treasure token. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a breeding pool tapped and edge wall innkeeper. So they are adventures with Obosh. Makes sense. All the cool adventure creatures are odd costed. That being said, uh, I don't think they're ready for what we are about to do to them. Play land, play an eye twitch, sacrifice our entire board to Torga, making it cost only two black mana. Shambling gas dies, so we either create a treasure or give a creature minus one minus one until end of turn. Let's kill that innkeeper. Eye twitch dies, so we can learn, get a pest summonings. Torga hits the battlefield, target player's life becomes half their starting life total. They're down to 10. Play an island and just pass the turn. I guess we can just wait for them to tap out in case they have a bone crusher giant to shock themselves down to eight, which would fizzle our second ride. So uh, yeah, we just pass the turn, wait for them to tap out. Yep, there's a brazen borer. Well, <laughs> here it comes. It is super second ride. They're at 10. Now they're at zero. That's GG. <laughs> Now that we've seen the combo, how insanely cool is this? Setting the opponent's life to exactly 10 and then doming them for another 10. Sure, there's other cards that can deal 10 damage or half the opponent's life total, but Torga is by far the most consistent and cheapest way of doing it. Here's the full decklist if you're interested and you can read my article for a deck tech, but otherwise, wait, what do you mean we just hit the nut draw and this will be way harder in an actual game? Well, yeah, I guess you got a point there. All right, let's see how the deck does if we don't have the absolute nut draw. <laughs> that being said, still a pretty good hand and we're on the play. So Swamp, a Shambling Ghast, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Mountain and a Faithless Looting. So draws two cards, discards two, Ooh, discards an Arc Light Phoenix. So at the beginning of combat, if they played three or more instant and sorceries, this will come back from the graveyard and can attack right away. So that's kind of scary. We draw a Morbid Opportunist, play a Swamp and Village Rites. Sac Sacrifice the Shambling Ghast, create a treasure, draw two cards, opponent, place a land, and a Sprite Dragon, so 2 mana 1 1 Flying Haze. Whenever they cast a non-creature spell, this gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, swings in for 1, we draw land, play Morbid Opportunist, so whenever another creature dies for the first time each turn, we draw a card, opponent, Expressive Iteration, looks at the top 3 cards of the library, puts 1 into the hand, 1 on the bottom of the library, and 1 into exile, place a land, 
Pillar of Flame to the face, swings in for three, already down to 14, ay, 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 and we draw another land, oh wow. Use the treasure to play Loth, which gets a loyalty counter whenever one of our creatures dies, draws cards, and most importantly can be minus to create two spider tokens with reach, so we have some blockers for all these flyers coming our way. Swing in for one, pass the turn, opponent Fable Passage gets an island, consider, Mills of Faith is looting. Another consider, mills a card, draws a card. Another faith is looting, oh god, please no phoenix. Uh, Ox of Agonas is bad, but not as bad. Oh, Unholy Heat deals with our love. And those were three or more instant and sorceries, so at the beginning of combat, Arclight Phoenix will come back from the graveyard and swing in with the team. And I think we just block the Arclight Phoenix here, because we really need a blocker for this Sprite Dragon next turn, and preferably have a creature to sacrifice to this deadly dispute. So I guess we are down to seven here. Opportunist triggers, draws a Shambling Ghast, and we draw a deadly dispute, so play the ghast, sacrifice it to the dispute, create a treasure, draw a card, create a treasure and draw two cards. Oh, another north is perfect here, we really need these reach blockers, but for now we can only play Jadar here. So at the beginning of our end step, if we control no decayed creatures, we create a decayed zombie. Swing in for one, create a zombie. Okay, so if our opponent has any removal for this spider, uh, we're just dead. Just gotta hope they don't have it. Considers. Of course they mill the four of Faithless Looting. Opt. Well, that's not it. Play land. Flashback Faithless Looting. I, I think we got away with it. Yep, they get back the Phoenix. Swing in. This time we do have to block the Sprite Dragon. Sacrifice it for the Deadly Dispute. Draw a card with the Opportunist. Draw two. Create a treasure. Down to four, but we get another turn here. Ooh, there's a Torga. We might actually just use this to set our own life total to 10. But for now, let's just play the Loth, minus it for some reach blockers. Swing in, end of combat, decayed zombie decays, so a creature dies. Loth gets a loyalty counter, morbid opportunist draws a card. Play land, end of turn, create a zombie. All right, opponent plays another opt. Okay, flashback faithless looting. Please don't discard two Arclight Phoenix here. Oh. Okay, Pillar of Flame to kill Loth. I guess that's fine, better than killing us at least. The swings in, block the dragon, and I think it's fine to take three from the Arclight Phoenix here. We're going to use Torga to target ourselves to put our own life total back up to 10 next turn, so it's fine to go down to one. I don't think they can deal one damage with a blue sauce. Let's go down to one here. Creature dies, Morbid Opportunist triggers. <laughs> Well, change of plans here. <laughs> I guess we just hit him with the one too. Happy feet, wombo combo, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, you might have noticed uh, we could have just attacked them for three, down to ten here. Hit him with the second right. Win the game, not as flashy, but just as effective. And that's actually one of the coolest features of this deck. Like, look at this match here, where opponent just relentlessly beats us down with artifacts, thinking that they you know, just race us down to zero. But little do they know, death is way closer than they expect, because while they were racing us down to zero, as you do, we were actually just racing them down to 10, and with all these one and two powered creatures, you can actually get there pretty consistently. I mean, who's gonna play around this? It, this deck just steals so many games. Like, control players think, oh, I finally stabilized the game. Let's play a Teferi. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Hit him with the riot. It's like so much fun. If you have the riot cards to spare, give it a try. Otherwise, if you like this kind of content, here's a whole playlist. If you watched this far in the video, you probably already did, but please tap that like button, subscribe to the channel, and, well, <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.